So what are the early lessons? There's a lot of people that watch a PBD podcast or watch a BizDoc podcast or, or here on Valuetainment and they own their own business. As a matter of fact, yeah. the last time we did a PBD Live, I don't even remember, we had a couple people on here. Uh, Giuliani was on here and we did it for a live audience. And halfway through, Pat said, just out of curiosity, how many people of you own a business? 70% of the hands went up of people that own businesses. So that's our audience here. And a lot of times, it's great to hear that you're not crazy. It's great to hear that, um, that what you're doing is okay or that all you need to do is go another mile and you're gonna make it across the desert. You know, what were some lessons you learned early on, maybe from mistakes you made? I've made mistakes in business that have almost cost me everything, by the way. Um, and then I've made decisions that were phenomenal and the leverage off of the decision was incredible. Yeah. What were some, if you were speaking to somebody that's about three to five years into their entrepreneurial journey, they built something, they got it up, it's going, and they're really trying to get it to really go to be that permanent lifestyle business. Thinking back to those days, what were some lessons you learned or tips that you got from other people that were so incredibly helpful that you look back and you say, wow, that was a real leverage point there? Well, I, I tell you one one real quick story. When I was building the first wing stop, uh, along with a guy that was the first general manager who went on to become a multimillionaire as a franchisee, he was helping me build it. And we went into a Home Depot. Home Depot had just opened back then. I had my tape measure and I must have looked more like a construction guy than a restaurant guy, but we had no money and we did everything ourselves. And the guy was waiting on me. He said, what are you fellas building? And we said, well, we're building this little restaurant uh, down the street there in Garland. Well, he said, what kind of restaurant is it? I said, well, you're gonna sell, chick gonna sell chicken wings. And he was like, and, and, and what else? I mean, but what are, you really, what are you really gonna sell? I said, we're really gonna sell chicken wings and a couple other side items is what the restaurant's gonna sell. And here's where he thought I was the, working for somebody who was gonna build it. He said, let me give you some advice. He said, as soon as you're done with that job, you be sure and get all your money from that man because they're damn sure nobody can make a living selling nothing but chicken wings. <laughs> I thought that was so funny uh, because uh, here's the lesson. People, you've got to be careful who you listen to when you own your own business because people are quick to offer up their opinions about what you should do, what you're doing wrong. But these are the people that have never signed the front of a paycheck in their life and probably never will. They don't know the gravity of being self-employed. They don't know the gravity of the responsibility that comes with employing others. And, uh, but, we're, but sometimes we give them the power to discourage us. And, and, and they should have no voice because unless you've done it and you've done it more successfully than me, I don't have an ear, I don't have an ear to listen, listen to it. People want to, just like the crabs in the pot story, they know there's no chance of them getting out of the pot. So when a crab starts to get one arm over the edge, they pull, want to pull you back down into the, the pot of mediocrity, the pot of just a mere existence, the pot of working for somebody else your whole life. And, and those people will steal your dream if you let them. And the secret is do not let them. That is incredibly powerful. And what you just said, um, let me tell you, we're gonna clip that out of here and we're gonna tweet that because what you just said is just a powerful piece of advice in that little, little package there. You know, you, you're so correct. People are so, you know, for their own fears and their own need to have an opinion, their own need to be right, are so eager to throw breadcrumbs out there to you, but it's not their money, it's not their risk, it's not their life, right. it's not what they're doing. And by the way, they're, they're working over here for someone else. So, and maybe they have to, maybe they have a kid. Maybe they, they don't have any choice and they don't have any, got any capital to risk. Okay, well then do your thing, do your thing. But yeah, but never wish me well, you know, wish me well and, and, and mean it instead of really kind of under your breath, wishing that I'll be back down in the pot with you in a minute. The second lesson that I've learned, and I found this true in life in general, uh, and this is what I would tell somebody that's early on in their business career. Most people quit too soon. And that's true of relationships as well as it is in business. Most people give up 
too soon before they've had an opportunity to use what they're learning. And it's kind of like uh, putting the nutrients back into the soil. You grow your first crop and it was a so-so crop, but you can plow it under and now you can fertilize your soil for your next crop to be even better. If you constantly quit and try different things and jump around, you don't get to, you know, you never get to grow a crop in your enriched soil. And that's why I've noticed people quit too soon. And, and if it's something that you think you can learn from your mistakes, correct and fall down forward, man, you got to do it. But I see people give up all the time on, on a lot of things. And, uh, and that would be one of the, probably the second thing that I would say is, uh, don't quit too soon. You know, you, you never know how close you are to almost cracking it. Uh, if you quit, you just, you'll never know.